Applying washes on a winter whitewash sounds like some kind of... washception. <laughs> but it's actually a ton of fun, and there are a few specific tricks which you can use on your own winter model. So get comfy and check it out! What's up you beautiful viewers, it's Uncle Night Shift again. So, last week we created a partially worn winter whitewash. This type of camo already has tons of interesting contrast, but that's of course just the beginning. Today we'll add more definition to the surface using washes, and also make the model a little bit dirty with the ambient occlusion technique. Both of those techniques will add even more contrast to the already busy surface of this model. Of course I didn't protect the winter whitewash with any kind of varnish. I repeat, I didn't protect the winter whitewash with any varnish. There's no need for that and it would unify the satin green and matte white, making the model more dull. Before we start, let's keep in mind that there are different sections on this model. Let's call them zones. We have a white zone, lots of partially worn zones, and some green zones. We'll have to use different colors for each zone if we want to keep the result looking somewhat natural. Let's start with the white zones. Here I'm gonna use an enamel wash for interiors from AK Interactive. I think there's a dedicated winter camo wash, but this one will do just fine. It has this sort of grey-green color, which is excellent for white surfaces. It's also reasonably light, so the contrast won't be overly strong. One of the worst mistakes is to use a wash that has a yellowish tint, or is just on the warmer side of the color palette. It's important to use desaturated cold grayish paints. Not just for washes, but for filters and oil dots as well. Otherwise the model will look as if someone... urinated over it. And I don't want to sound harsh with this statement, but honestly, that's how yellowish white looks like. Also, I mentioned this several times already, but I really think it's best to keep your washes relatively clean, aka don't leave any excess wash to dry up on the surface. You can create stains and streaks during this step, but we'll get to that later in this video. And the part about keeping it clean, it applies tenfold in this case. Otherwise, you're risking the washes getting out of hand and turning your winter camo into an off-white grimy mess. Now we have those partially worn zones. Here we have to focus on details and corners that are covered in heavy layer of white. You might notice that I'm not applying the light grey wash everywhere. That's because I'll be using darker washes to outline those parts. Just like before, it's good to keep the wash relatively clean and crisp, although here you can afford to blend it into the surface while also creating some subtle stains. The white paint is pretty worn down, so it's understandable if it also gets a little dirty. If you accidentally apply the grey wash over a green part, you can always just wipe it off or leave it as it is and later cover it with a more appropriate darker tone. That's the cool thing about layering your effects, especially when you're starting with the lightest tones and finishing with the darkest. Alright, so now we have all the white parts finished. And by finished I just mean they have the wash applied. So let's move on and use a darker tone. I already applied this one on the turret. I don't know if it's noticeable, but you'll see exactly what I mean. For this layer we're gonna use winter streaking grime, but this product is a little thick, so we have to dilute it with enamel thinner into a consistency of a wash. This paint is basically a dark brown, but I don't know, it has some dark grey or even dark blue mixed in. It's hard to figure out, but it's designed for models in winter settings, so, you know, how bad can it be? Anyway, it's noticeably darker than the previous wash and that makes it perfect for those parts that are mostly green, aka where the Russian 4BO is showing through. But note that I'm also applying it over those small patches of white. That's because the green is more dominant and I want the occasional white spot to be very faint in the end. The great thing about adding a wash to your model is that it's not a difficult technique. You don't have to be a genius or an artist to apply it correctly. That makes this technique one of the more relaxing ones, which can often make you think about lots of stuff while working on it. For example, you can focus on imagining the finished model and deciding where to use which technique. I'm gonna quote Mike Rinaldi here, because he totally nailed it, although in a different context, 
but basically this is when the model starts talking to you and telling you exactly what it needs. But not only what, but also when and how. The last wash color will be dark brown for green vehicles. This one is so dark and I like to use it on deep panel lines. Those places are where dark shadows are always present and I think this wash is perfect for replicating that. Using pure black could look unnatural, although I did that many times and sometimes it can look great. But it heavily depends on the context, the shade of your model and other factors that I don't remember at the moment. But yeah, having those three different washes on this model makes it look so much more interesting. And dare I say, authentic as well. And like I said just a moment ago, this is exactly the point when the model starts telling you what you can do next. For example, with all those bolts nicely outlined, I might not need to paint dark colored steel chips on top of them, because that would destroy the nice contrast I already have there. Instead, I might want to paint some subtle chipping along the edge of the transmission cover, where it neighbors with the back plate with partially worn whitewash. Does anyone else get these moments of clarity while applying washes? I mean, just look at it. The entire surface is much more defined and the technique isn't complicated at all. One thing worth mentioning is that the winter whitewash is also partially a... wash. That means it can also flow around details, picking them out, but with white. Unlike regular washes, which are mostly darker. However, it's up to you if and where you want to use that effect. I want this tank to be quite filthy at the end, but I might add some white here and there later. Let's now take the interior wash once again, but this time we'll be using the thick gunk from the inside of the cap. You might want to dilute it into a more suitable consistency, but basically we're gonna use it instead of oil paints. Why you ask? Pfft, I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. I just wanted to try it out. And using the same paints for consistent results is not a bad idea at all. And enamels dry faster than oil paints. That might be also a plus point. Anyhow, what I'm creating here are some dirt passes, aka ambient occlusion. It's basically about creating more contrast between parts in a quite subtle way, with fake shadows and accumulated dirt. One thing we should be careful about is how much of this technique are we gonna use. We have to think several steps ahead and anticipate the upcoming weathering techniques and how they're gonna affect the paint job. Um, let me be more specific. At this point I felt like I just need to add the dirt passes on vertical plates covered in white. I won't add any of these effects to fenders, because I know that I want this tank to look like it's been operating in a muddy winter soil. Which means there will be some heavier mud effects. That's gonna create enough contrast on its own and suddenly there might be way too many effects on each fender section. The distress for BO, worn whitewash, dirt pass, chipping, rust, dust, mud. You're starting to see what I mean. The only exception were the toolboxes as they are raised details and I don't wanna rely only on mud effects here. This process is easily done, but it's much harder to lay it down properly and in a reasonable amount. Again, just like with washes, we don't want to turn our whitewash into a grimy mess. That's especially important, once again, on the turret sides. Here I'm using a more diluted paint and a lot of thinner to blend it into a barely noticeable color transition. Okay, that was the hard part. These next effects are much easier and we've done them multiple times on this channel. Here I'm using the winter streaking grime to add more dirt passes around the hatches. You can see the connection. I used the interior wash on white parts for both washes and dirt passes and the same applies for winter streaking grime on the green and partially worn parts. Even though I'm using a significantly darker color, the final result has to be very subtle. So don't be afraid to use larger amounts of enamel thinner to properly blend the dark paint. After all, enamels are much harder to blend than oil paints. Like, if I used an oil paint for this, I could blend it with a completely dry brush. And also, if you accidentally blend it too much, you can easily add more paint while the surface is still wet. It's pretty fun and you can play around all day long. And the only place where I use the dark wash for this effect is the gun barrel. 
Again, you guys are definitely familiar with this effect and I really wanted the green barrel to stand apart from the rest of the tank. And that's it. To be completely transparent with you, I feel like I could now just start adding the mud effects because the winter camo looks pretty interesting and probably doesn't need any extra effects except mud of course. But uh, I don't know, you know how much I love my chipping and rust zones. So the next episode will be about me playing around with that. If you feel like adding rust effects on top of a winter camo sounds absolutely terrifying and is probably one of the dumbest ideas ever, then you're probably right. But I already did that a few times and I want to try it again. And I also need to paint some details like the exhausts and the tarp. So I hope the hype is more real than ever. Seeing me destroy this model with chipping sounds pretty entertaining after all. I mean, my patrons already know how it went, so if you wanna know more, consider becoming a patron as well. Anyway, I hope you found this video helpful or at least interesting to watch and if you did please give it a like because it helps me a lot. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already because then you won't miss the upcoming videos which I keep posting all the time. Thank you all for watching, I'll see you mates in the next one and here are some bloopers. Also, uh, also I... <coughs> also... <laughs> The white paint is pretty worn down, so it's understandable if it also gets a little dirt. Uh, that's the cool thing about the... That's the cool... Th <laughs> anyway. <laughs> but note that... But note that I'm applying... <laughs> but, not on, but not only what? But not... On, <laughs> but not only what? <laughs> and I think this wash is perfect for replicating that. That that